Hello, JNM here with a new one for the basics of modeling with Blender. We are going to create this model here and I will show you how to use the spin tool for that to create the round parts in edit mode. Okay, so we start with a new project. This is Blender 3.0, but you can use 2.8 or 9 as well. I select the cube and the camera and press the delete key to remove them. Okay, now the first thing that I will add is a simple plane. I press Shift and A and select Mesh Plane. Then we have it here at the center. I press Tab to go to edit mode. And then I want to rotate it 90 degrees around the X axis. I press R followed by X and type 9, 0. Okay, then I snap the view to front autographic. You hold the middle mouse button and rotate the view. And to snap it, you hold the Alt key down. Then I go to the edge selection here in the toolbar. I will need this in a moment. And now I want to move the mesh. So I press G and then you can see we can move the mesh around. Okay, great, but I also want to snap it to the grid. To do this, you just hold the control key pressed. All right, after we moved it, I want to resize the plane. So I select this edge and press G followed by X. And then we can move this edge along the X axis with the control key pressed snap to the grid and modify the mesh like that. All right, now it's time to create the round part, the arc. And this is where the spin tool comes into play. I select this edge here at the top and the arc should go like that. Okay, so I select the spin tool and then we have this gizmo to spin around an axis. At the moment it is set to the Z axis, but I want to spin around the Y axis. And when I change it, we get the green gizmo. That's nice, but you see when I spin, this is not what we were going for because the 3D cursor is the center of the spin operation. So we have to change its location. So go ahead and select the cursor tool and then I move it and hold the control key pressed so I can snap it to the grid. This location seems to be a good center for the spin. Then I select the spin tool again and again use the gizmo to spin the selected edge around this point. This looks good. You see we are creating 12 segments. The property steps is set to 12. And again, I can press the control key to clamp the rotation to steps of 5 degrees. So you can spin, for example, exactly 90 degrees. You can achieve the same when you go here to the operator panel of the spin operator and set the angle to, for instance, 90 degrees. Okay, so we created the left part. Now I want to bring this edge here on the right side to the center. Of course, I could select the move tool and just move it to the right side, but I don't want to move the edge, I want to extend it. So I press E to extrude, followed by X to extrude along the X axis, and I press the control key, so I snap again to the grid. Okay, nice, but I think the upper part is a bit too high, so I box select this. Like this, and then I set the orientation of the gizmo to global. And then I can move the selected mesh downwards. Okay, but of course I want to symmetrize the mesh. So I could use the symmetrize operator or add a mirror modifier. You find it here in the modifiers panel. I enable clipping, it's a habit, but in this case it's more important to check the merge option so that the vertices in the middle are merged together when we apply the modifier. And this is the next thing that I will do after adding the modifier. I go to apply and what you see is the resulting geometry. Okay, you can tap into edit mode now and I select this edge and press Ctrl and X to dissolve the edge, we don't need it. And then it's time to extrude the shape. So switch to face selection, then I press A to select the whole mesh. And then the E key to extrude. Okay, very nice, now I select all again by pressing A and I want to move it to the center so hold the control key pressed so that I snap to the grid while I move it with the move tool.
Alright, this is the basic mesh that we wanted to create. And now select the faces here at the front. We have one active face. Then I select this one with the control key pressed, so that we are selecting the shortest path of faces. Okay, now I want to make it look a bit more interesting. So I press the I key to add an inset, like that. And then I press E to extrude the selected faces to the inside. Alright, that's it for the modeling part. Now we can use some features of my add-on JMesh tools to make the object look a bit more fancy and crisp. So open the JMesh panel, and here we have operators like the bevel, that I will use now. And this adds a bevel and weighted normals modifier, and a nice and smooth shading. Ok, then I close it and open the symmetrize operator, because I want to have this indentation on the positive y axis as well. So you see, it's pretty simple to improve your mesh like that. Then I will add a steel material, which is just a simple principle shader, but that the metallic property is set to 1. Then we can change the render mode to material preview, and it looks like that. By the way, the JMesh Tools add-on is still for free. The link to the GitHub is added to the description, but you can also get it from the Blender Market. Then you get special support and you support the development of the add-on and the Blender Dev Fund. Or if you like the Gumroad page more, you can also get it from there. The links can be found in the description below. Alright, thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you do, then please subscribe to JNM and follow me on Instagram, Twitter or Facebook and support me by being my patron or join as a channel member. If you have any questions, add these to the comments and I'll see you in the next one.